everyone, welcome to the Oakler's YouTube channel. In today's tutorial, we're going to be focusing on a beginner friendly bag. This is for those of you guys who have wanted to play with a clear type vinyl for a while and maybe a little bit of that adhesive binding. We're going to focus on that today. Today, we're making the Bella pouch and this comes to us from Linux Studio. All right, guys, I'm just going to tell you, if you've been wanting to work with clear vinyl, that's what we're going to focus on today. We're going to focus on clear vinyl and binding. That's it. This is going to be beginner friendly. There are four different patterns in this one pattern. There's four versions of this one pattern. So first, there's two different sizes. I'll show you. This is the small size and this is the large size. They are quite a bit different. This is not a medium and a small. This is a large. This is a small. So we have two different sizes and then on top of that, we have two different side shapes. One, so you can see on the small one here, is more of a rectangle. It's built with a rectangle panel. The other one has a rounded panel that you're going to use a template for. So you're going to have to decide which of these things you want to do. In today's tutorial, to make it as easy as possible, we're going to be making the large size with the rectangle size. So size large, rectangle size. The curved edges are not difficult. You might just have a little bit of a challenge with your binding. And I'm really focusing on beginner friendly everything today. That's what I want to focus on. So let me just walk you through this pouch. It's very, very simple. So if you have a directional print like this, you're going to have two panels and then you connect them on the bottom. If you don't have a directional print, you don't need it. You just have one panel. You have your front and your back and then you have this awesome long zipper. Now look at this zipper detail. You have a binding that actually wraps around the entire zipper. I love that so much. So you have like a nice little pull tab here. When you open up your pouch, just nice, big and open. There's no lining. This is not a lining bag. This is a clear vinyl bag and there are no pockets. So it's very quick, very easy, very, very beginner friendly. So while I think this is a fantastic bag for beginners who are like, I want to step into the world of clear vinyl. I want to step into the world of this pre-made binding. This is also a great bag for those of you guys with more experience. You're just like, I just want to make a whole bunch of bags. <laughs> like, like I got Valentine's day. I've got birthday parties. I got summer stuff coming up. Like I just want to make a whole bunch of fun bags. This is, this is such a good pattern for that because it's so fast. All right, so with beginners in mind, we're going to be focusing on two main products today that I really, really think would be great for you. First is a clear vinyl. Now clear vinyl can be something like this. This is kind of like an iridescent clear vinyl. There's also like totally clear vinyl. Clear vinyl is kind of notorious for being sticky, meaning it doesn't actually like have a sticky substance on that. I had somebody ask me that recently. It doesn't feel sticky when you, when you touch it. It's just if you touch this to metal, it sticks. So metal presser foot and the bed, you know, the little panel underneath the presser foot, two metal spots. This likes to stick to it. Maybe you have a plastic, you know, extended table or something like that. It likes to stick to things. So when you're working with clear vinyl, normally a clear vinyl, especially will come with some sort of a backing on it. So you can see this is like a sheer mesh backing. Sometimes it's a paper backing. You're going to want to keep that and you're going to want to just leave that with it. However, if you're working with a jelly vinyl, jelly vinyls are actually not that sticky. So a lot of these jelly vinyls, they don't have a sticky side. They're a lot more matte and they're still considered like a clear vinyl because they really don't need a lining or a backing of any sort, but they're a lot easier to work with. So for beginners who, are, who haven't worked with sticky clear vinyl, I would suggest a jelly vinyl. I'm going to have a few links down below of places I like to look for that. Really just look for the name jelly vinyl in the word. Um, and it should be a more matte and they have really fun prints that go with it too. But there's also jelly vinyl that are just solid colors, which are beautiful. The other product I'm going to really encourage you to look into today is an adhesive pre-cut binding. Okay. This is a one inch wide, like nylon material binding. This is from fabric therapy and it has a light adhesive on the back. Meaning you just take this, you fold it over your seam and it sticks in place. Meaning you don't have to worry with clips. You don't have to worry about you know, ironing this or anything like that. You don't have to build it. It's not a cool cotton and it's going to be easy to keep clean, which is again, what we love with our bags is cleanability. This is a product that I love so, so much. And my biggest concern when I got this was, oh my gosh, it has a sticky backing. Meaning when I sew it on my machine, it's going to gunk up my needle with glue and sticky stuff, right? No, it's a very light sticky. So it holds, 
once you wrap it around your seam, it's gonna stay there, it's not moving. However, if you're like, oh no, I don't like how it looks, you can just pull it up, reposition it, and put it back down. It's very easy to work with, one of my favorite products, honestly. Now, if you don't wanna use that, you can actually just use cuts of water-resistant canvas as well that are, the pattern suggests three quarters of an inch wide or one inch wide, you can use those as well, and just some double-sided tape. On this bag right here, I actually used a pre-cut nylon binding, but it doesn't have a sticky backing, and I just used double-sided tape on the other side. So. You, you don't have to get the sticky stuff. I'm just saying if you haven't tried it, I highly encourage you to give it a try because it works really well, especially with a bag like this. So those are two products that I think are gonna be super helpful with this bag, especially for beginners. And again, for those of you guys with lots of experience, you do you. You know, if you love the quilt cotton binding, do it. If you wanna do the rounded corners, do it. Like, go wild. But I'm just speaking, I'm speaking to the beginner beginners who are just really, really, it's spring, summertime. You really wanna get into the clear vinyl, the jelly vinyl but you've never worked with it it's kind of scary this is gonna be a good place to start because when you're working with this type of material and this type of binding that kind of really work well together the thing you're gonna be focusing on the most is figuring out tension on your machine I'm gonna give you some tips about tension when it comes to working with stuff like this on your sewing machine but you don't have to worry about struggling with the material and like a piece of paper or the mesh and making sure everything's in the same place like pick pick one battle at a time you know what I mean so if you're new to the Oak Lords YouTube channel please consider clicking subscribe down below if at any point you like this video please give it a like. Any questions, comments, shout outs, leave them down below. I love Leenix Studio. We, we've done one pattern from her before on the channel and it was so, so cute. It's actually my my cruise beach bag. I absolutely love it. It's made of nylon and it's got all these little quilted designs on it. It's so fun. So if you wanna go check that out, I'll have a link down below for the playlist. They're coming out with new patterns all the time. So if you see a pattern from them you wanna see on the channel, make sure you leave a comment down below and we'll add it to the list. All right guys, let's get started. So there's really not a lot of materials at all for this project. If you're gonna be making the large, you're gonna need one roll of vinyl. I'm using a 12 inch tall roll. A 12 or 18 inches will be fine. But if you're using a 12 inch roll like I am, you're gonna need at least 24 inches of it. And then you're gonna need some binding. Now you can make your own binding. You can just cut strips of water resistant canvas. The pattern does suggest the binding be about three quarters of an inch wide. My binding is one inch wide, which is totally fine. I really, really love this adhesive binding. I get this from Fabric Therapy. It's so easy to work with and it's great for this project. Since I'm making the large, I'm gonna need at least 77 inches of this. And then you're gonna need a zipper, a zipper that's at least 14 inches long for the large. Again, remember, I'll, I'll, it all depends on if you're making the small or the large, but this is not a pattern that requires a lot of stuff at all. So here's the other stuff I'll be using today. As always, my threads of choice. Top thread going through the needle is a Tex 45 weight thread from Wizardry Stitchery. This is color Fairy Floss. In the bobbin, I'm using a Guterman thread from Joann's, and my needle is a Microtex 8012. I highly encourage you to have some double-sided tape handy today, especially if your binding is not an adhesive binding, if it's just like a regular strip of material. Uh, tape is gonna be your best friend. I really like to use the eighth of an inch tape with this project. You could use the quarter inch tape as well, but for some reason I feel like the eighth of an inch just really is more useful. I have a lighter to clean up any loose threads. I have my stiletto and a one inch by six inch ruler and then a vinyl pen for marking on my vinyl. And then of course, lots and lots of clips and my bag tag. All right, so here's all the pattern pieces. That's it, this is so easy, it's so much fun. So you have a front piece and a back piece. Now, if you don't have a directional print on your vinyl, remember we are using clear vinyl here. Uh, and even though this doesn't look clear, it is considered a clear vinyl, it's a jelly vinyl, we don't need a lining on it. If you have a directional print, you will wanna cut two pieces of these and sew them together. My print is not really considered a directional print, but I'm just gonna show you how to do that. If you don't have a directional print or you're just using clear vinyl, you're gonna cut one piece that's like this, all right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you how to put them together. And then you're gonna need two cuts for your sides. And then I have one cut of vinyl for the zipper tab. And then you're gonna need lots of binding. I don't pre-cut my binding down, I just kinda cut as I go. But the pattern does give you measurements for all the binding pieces, so you could pre-cut them down first. All right, first thing the pattern has us do is add our binding to the top of our side pieces. So you can see I just kind of run this over the top and extend it a little bit further than it needs to be. Now remember, there are two different sizes and two different versions. I'm doing the sharp corner version, the rectangle version. You could do the rounded version if you'd like. I'm trying to make this as easy as possible and I do believe that the corner version is easier when it comes to putting the binding on. So with this type of binding I have here, and even if you have like a nylon binding like this that doesn't have the paper on the back, you can still fold this in half wrong sides together, long sides together to get that midpoint mark. I feel like folding water resistant canvas, this nylon, folding the material with your fingers gives you a better midpoint mark rather than using a pen 
and a ruler. That's just from my experience. So I'll take one side piece here and I'll remove the paper from the back. Here we go. And it's not super sticky. It's sticky. It is a good adhesive, but it's not gonna gum up your needle or anything. So I have my binding wrong side up and I'm just gonna take my little side unit here and the short top edge. I'm just gonna lay this over that binding, matching up the top edge with the fold. And then once I have that stuck on like that, and if you're using a non-adhesive binding, you could use double-sided tape here, or you can just fold it over the top and clip it in place, whatever is easiest for you. But since I have the adhesive one, I can now just fold this down to the front like that, and there we go, easy peasy. So I'm gonna repeat this with the other side panel. Okay, now that these are adhered, I'm gonna take them to the sewing machine and I'm gonna top stitch above the bottom raw edge of each of these at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Once you have those top stitched in place, if you have your binding overhanging the top like I do, just trim it down so it's the same, same size as your side panels. This is gonna look so cute, you guys. All right, you can set these to the side. Next up, grab your front panel. If you're just using one big piece, it should look similar to this, just one nice large piece. You can skip what I'm about to do. If you have a directional print, like I said, this is not really a directional print. I mean, no, I wouldn't say it's a directional print. But if you have a directional print, this is how you would put this together to piece it. So you're gonna take both of your panels and you're gonna lay them so that the direction is top over here, right sides together, just like that. Grab your clips and clip them together along the bottom edge. And now we're gonna sew along this bottom clipped edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. Back stitch is the beginning and the end. If you find that with your clear vinyl, your thread is kind of looping, a lot of times we'll find this where when we're sewing, the top looks okay, but then you flip it over and on the bottom, you have like the top thread kind of making little loops here. That means you don't have enough tension on your top thread. So the dial, like for me, it's a computer raise, but you should have a dial or a way to adjust the top tension. The top tension is the easiest tension to adjust. You don't really wanna mess with the bobbin tension. So the top tension, you're gonna to wanna to make it more tense. You want it to pull harder up. So it's, it's too loose right now, which is why it's sucking down to the bottom. You want it to, to pull harder. So I increase my tension by like half a turn, a full turn when I'm working with clear vinyl, just to make sure we don't get that looping on the bottom. All right, this next part can be a little tricky just because the seam allowance is, kind of, is on the small side. Uh, but what you wanna do is you wanna open up these two panels flip this over and you wanna open up the seam allowance on the back. And with clear vinyl, I mean, you can press and press and press this with your finger all you want, it's not gonna stay. Uh, so you really have to just work on it at the machine. And I do highly encourage you to do this, to top stitch this down because you want this to be as flat as possible. I mean, it's the very bottom of the bag. If it's not flat, it might not lay flat. So what we're gonna do is I'm just kind of finger pressing it a little bit, just kind of warming it up so it's not so stiff. And when I go to the sewing machine, I'm gonna use my fingers and I'm gonna carefully watch as I'm sewing and I'm gonna top stitch along both sides of the seam, always lifting this up and making sure my seam is staying open so I'm top stitching each side down to their own front panel. Do this at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, you might have noticed I got a little carried away <laughs> on one bit over here. It's okay, it, see you can see I didn't quite catch it because it did move so far away. Um, it's the bottom of the bag. It's not gonna be noticeable, you're not gonna see it. I just wanna make sure it's still flat and it's still good. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a bag tag. Um, you can add a sew on bag tag or you can do a woven bag tag later. I'm gonna show you both. Um, I have these adorable woven bag tags from Carolina Little Stitches, and they're just the most cute thing ever. So I'm gonna show you how to attach one of those as well. But first I'm gonna attach my personal bag tag. And so I'm gonna pick which side I want it to be the front of the bag. Uh, it doesn't matter for this panel, but I'm gonna say this, this side right here is the front. And I'm gonna find the midpoint along the top edge. And I always prefer folding and pinching and marking. Um, you can mark it with a pen. You can just cut a little tiny top off. This is gonna be bounded in the end, so you don't have to worry about that being seen or anything. Uh, but I always prefer folding over measuring because I just feel like it's the most accurate. And then I'm gonna measure one and three quarters of an inch down from that top midpoint. That's just personally where I think it looks good. If you want it higher or lower, that's fine. I wouldn't go too close to the top edge here because you will be attaching a zipper and some binding. And then grab your double-sided tape and add the double-sided tape to the back of your tag. And then I just use my ruler to center this, trying to get it as straight as possible. And now I'm just gonna go top stitch along all four edges of my bag tag at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So now grab your side panels. We're actually gonna just start putting this whole thing together. I know, we're almost done, it's crazy. So 
where you mark everything on your side panels is going to depend on the type of the type of side panels you have. First and foremost, no matter if it's curved or rectangle, you're going to mark the midpoint on the bottom edge of these side panels. So once again, I'm just going to fold this in half and I'm going to use my scissors to cut a teeny tiny triangle right on that fold. This is just easiest for me so I can see it both sides where the midpoint is. If you have a clear vinyl, then you can definitely just use a silver ink pen and mark it and you, you'll be able to see it on either side because it's clear vinyl. So if you're doing the rectangle sides like I am, you're gonna grab a ruler and you're gonna measure in a one quarter of an inch from the side on the bottom edge and mark a line on both sides. So a quarter of an inch in from each long edges on the bottom edge, do this for both your panels. If you're using the curved bottoms, then you're gonna mark from the center half of an inch to the left, half of an inch to the right, and you're going to mark those lines. It's going to be different. With the curved ones, you kind of stitch down the middle bottom part first and then work on stitching the curves. For the rectangle one, we're just gonna kind of do it all in one go. But there are differences there, so make sure you think about that. The curved one is not hard to piece together. The curved one can just be a little difficult with binding if you like a really smooth finish. I feel like the rectangle one is, is easier, which again is what we're going for today. We're going for easy. So this part might throw you a little bit. We're not sewing this right sides together and turning it out. We're sewing everything wrong sides together. So take your exterior main panel and lay it wrong side up just like this and then grab one of your side panels and you're gonna lay it right side up so the two pieces are wrong sides together and you're gonna use that midpoint mark to line it up with the midpoint on your exterior panel. Now because we sewed two panels together, that seam is our midpoint. If you only have one piece here, you're gonna to wanna to fold this in half and find the midpoint along the long edges and mark those. So once again, these are wrong sides together. I'm gonna to flip this, line up along that edge, matching up the midpoints, and then clip these together just like this. And because it's easy, I'm just gonna do the other side as well. So I'm gonna take the other side panel on the other long edge of my main panel, and I'm going to clip these wrong sides together. All right, now we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and starting at that first quarter inch mark that we made on the bottom edge of the side panel, we're gonna stitch down to the other mark at a quarter inch seam allowance, making sure you back stitch at the beginning and the end. Do this for both sides. So you're not going all the way to the very edge on either one of these. All right, so this is what you should have now. And if you wanna get an idea, what you're gonna do is just pretty much lift these up and pull these sides up just like that. To make this easier, let's do some prep work. So with these side panels facing right side up, I can still see those quarter inch marks that I made on the bottom edge of my side panels. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to lift up my side panel and I'm going to cut into the main panel right at those quarter inch marks and I'm cutting straight up to the beginning and the end of my stitching. So I'm just on the right side over here. So I'm gonna lift up my side panel because I'm not cutting the side panel, I'm only cutting the main panel. And it's just a tiny snip through the main panel right where the stitching starts and stops. This is going to allow the material to expand and give you a really nice structure. So again, lifting up the side panel on the left side over here, I'm going to snip right straight up from the long edge of my main panel towards that thread. So I'm gonna do this for both sides. So by doing this now, when you raise this up, instead of your material trying to round out against a sharp curve, it's just going to spread. So no, let me see if you can see. So you see, instead of it going like this, kind of trying to wrap around it, when we spread it, you see how, I don't know if you can see, can you see how the material just opens up and there's like a V shaped here? And then we have the corner of our side panel. It gives you a really strong corner. Okay, so now we gotta sew the sides on. So the last prep step you wanna do is you're gonna measure from the short edges, so that's the tops of your pouch. Remember, the, in the end, it's gonna be like this. These are the tops. You're gonna wanna measure from each of these down seven eighths of an inch and mark those placements on both sides. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our side panel, and I'm gonna start over here on the left side, and we're going to pull these up wrong sides together. The top edge of your side panel is going to match up with that seven eighths of an inch mark. Remember, both of these are wrong sides together and then clip there first so you have the right spot and then work on straightening out this edge over here and clip along this long straight edge. If you're doing the curved version, clip the straight part, clip the top and the straight part first and then work on 
pushing out the side panel kind of like a bowl and get that in place. There we go. But if you're doing a straight version like I am, you should see it all comes to like a perfect point down here. There we go. So now I'm gonna take this to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch right along this clipped edge here at a quarter inch seam allowance. If you're doing the version that I am, you can stitch from the top, make sure you backstitch all the way down until you meet up with those threads already and then just stop there. You don't have to go all the way to the end. You can just meet up with the bottom stitching down here, which should be about a quarter of an inch from the bottom. And make sure you backstitch, like I said, at the beginning and the end. All right, there's one side done. Let's repeat this for the other side. So once again, I'm gonna start at the top of my pocket and I'm gonna line that up with that 7 8 inch mark that's by the top of my now front panels when I'm working on. And I'm gonna clip these together and I'm just gonna clip along the sides. I'll say for the rounded corner or the straight one, this part is really not the hard part. The hard part is binding, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you what I do to try to get pretty good corners. So once again, we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and you might've noticed I'm using a zipper foot. I find that's easiest, especially down here on the bottom. And we're going to stitch at a quarter inch seam allowance. Just make sure you really push the material out of your way while you're doing this and keep it as flat as possible where you're stitching. Backstitch at the beginning and the end. So you see after you have one side done, it's like a perfect little box. Isn't that fun? So now we're just gonna repeat that with the other side. I will just kind of casually walk you through it. So lining up with the seven eighths of an inch mark and clipping along the long edge. And then once again, just sewing along that clipped edge at a quarter inch seam allowance, stopping once you reach the thread on the bottom and backstitching at the beginning and the end. There we go. And then for the last edge, just like we've done, just making sure to always line up the top edge with that seven eighths of inch mark. Don't accidentally go all the way to the top. You can have one, one heck of a time getting that to line up. And then just clip along the straight edge and then sew along that clipped edge at a quarter inch seam allowance, backstitching at the beginning and the end. How stinking cute is this? And see how it just stands up nice and flat? Oh, and when you zip it closed, it's a nice little triangle. Isn't that so cute? All right, now it's time to add some binding to the side. So I'm gonna show you how I do this. I, adding binding is not tricky, but those corners can be. So I have my long side binding cuts here, and I'm just going to fold along the center which gives me a nice midpoint mark. So I'm folding these wrong sides together, long sides together. All right, remember this is adhesive. If you don't have an adhesive binding, I do suggest you grab some double-sided tape and you add it to at least one long edge. So just on one side of that midpoint mark, not right on the midpoint mark, but like in between the edge and the midpoint, add some double-sided tape along one edge. That's going to be helpful. So I'm just going to start it off like this. And I like to just kind of lay my stuff on top of the binding. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to peel off a bit of the paper and then I'm working on this bottom edge right here. I'm going to lay this on top of my binding, matching up the edge here with that midpoint line and the binding needs to go all the way to the top, maybe even a little bit further. So now let's work on these corners over here. So up here at the top, I'm going to go ahead and just wrap the binding around. And even if you're using the adhesive binding, depending on the material you're using here, you might find it doesn't stick totally, so you can always add clips where you need it. Luckily, this adhesive binding isn't so sticky that like once it's down, it's down forever. So if you're like, ah, it's a little crinkly over here, just lift it up, smooth it out, put it back down. Okay, so now for the bottom edge here, I'm going to do just like I did before, I'm gonna remove some of the paper and I'm going to line up the bottom raw edge with that midpoint line and I'm just wrapping it around. I'm gonna deal with this corner after I wrap this around. So I'm just gonna wrap this around, sticking the back side just like that. So this is what I have. See how it's just kind of wrapped around like that? Okay, so once it's like this, I'm going to, looking at the top side here, I'm gonna press this down so that this inner raw edge of my binding is going straight up and creates a little triangle here on the folded edge. And the straighter you can keep it, the more accurate this is going to be. All right, so if you have to unstick it, move it around, again, regardless if it's adhesive or not, there we go. So now this is what it looks like. I have this bottom, I have the underside of my binding up like this. I have a straight line on the left side here going all the way up. And then I'm gonna wrap that down so that that corner meets up with the binding I already have adhered. So you see that gives me a nice little 45 degree angle here. Now let's look at the other side. So if you look at the other side, you'll notice that it's just kind of hanging off on its own. 
This is where it's a little tricky because you don't want to keep it pinched like that because you won't catch it when you sew it. So I'm going to kind of loosen up the binding a little bit and then I'm going to gently fold it and kind of pinch it over so that it folds over on itself just a bit, just like that. I don't want to leave it just pinched on its own because like I said, when you sew this, you're not going to catch it. You need to make sure it's completely smushed down. It doesn't have to look perfect, but it needs to be smushed down. So I'm going to do this with the other side as well. I'm just going to continue on lining up the raw edge with that midpoint mark on my binding and then wrapping the binding around the corner. There we go, so I have it wrapped. I don't know if you can see. I know there's a lot of colors here. So I have it wrapped around the corner and just like I did on the side, the bottom edge here, flatten things out as you need to. Don't worry about keeping everything perfectly, you know, structured. Get the inner edge of your binding to go straight up like that. And then you're gonna fold the side binding down so that it creates a nice little corner with that 45 degree angle there. So manipulate it however you need to. And that's the thing is, is just work on one side at a time. Don't worry about the back side while you're getting this set up. And this is where the adhesive binding is just really helpful because once you have it set up, you just stick it on place and now it's good. And then go to the back side here. And again, do you see, you see how it's just kind of poking away? If you don't address that, it's not going to sew on properly. So I kind of poke it out with my fingers. I'll un stick it for a minute and then I just kind of pinch it and I'm gonna push it towards the bottom of the bag and this just is gonna take some maneuvering you just want to make sure it's not hanging off and then it's folded down there we go and then I'm gonna continue adding the binding up the other edge of my panel and then I'm just gonna wrap it around that straight edge there you go and look at the front and the back. Make sure if there's any spots you need to address, you do that. All right, once your binding is adhered, we're going to stitch this down. We're gonna to top stitch it down at a quarter inch seam allowance. I personally find it easiest to top stitch it with the exterior side facing out versus top stitching it like this and kind of wrapping it around. I actually find it's easier to do it this way with the main panels out and then I just go around like this. Make sure you are always pushing the bag out of the way so it doesn't get in your way and a zipper foot is going to be helpful here all right once you have it all sewn on take a look isn't that adorable oh my gosh i love it so much okay if you have any overhang of your binding go ahead and trim that down you want it to be completely even with the top there we go that's one side done now just repeat that with the other side i'm going to do the other side off camera because it is exactly the same um and i don't want to confuse you more with more words all righty <laughs> So cute, isn't it? And it comes together so fast. All right, set this aside for just a moment while we prepare the zipper. So on your zipper tape, I have not added the pull. Don't add the pull, we're gonna be separating these. So on your zipper tape, on one short end, mark in one inch along each edge and just mark that right along the edge. You don't want this to be seen later. And then we're just gonna open this up like this and at that one inch mark, fold the zipper tape wrong sides together and you see how the coils kind of go out to the right let them do that, and then keeping it folded, just kind of tuck the top zipper tape behind it and add a clip to hold it in place. So the other side as well, I'm just going to pinch right at that one inch mark and then fold it so that the zipper tape goes behind it. And then I'm going to clip this in place. And now I'm gonna to go to the sewing machine and I'm just going to stitch right along the edges here where it's folded over at an eighth of an inch seam allowance to hold it in place like this. All right, once you have those stitched down so you don't have to worry about them, you can separate your zipper tape just like this. And now grab your bag and with the front panel facing you, just like this, we're gonna lay this open and grab your zipper tape so that the folded edge, when your zipper is right side up like this, the zipper coils are on the bottom and the folded edge is over here on the left and I'm working on the back panel. So I'm looking at the front panel but I'm working on the back panel and I'm looking at the back side of the back panel and my zipper is right side up and I'm going to just line it up so that the folded edge here lines up with the edge of my binding and the raw edge of my zipper tape lines up with the top raw edge of my back panel and again my zipper is laying against the wrong side of my back panel and I'm just going to clip this in place along this whole edge so the 
folded over edge doesn't go all the way to the side. It starts right at the edge of your binding, so the inside edge of your binding, but the extended edge over here, the not folded over edge, that's gonna extend all the way off to the, all the way off, just like that. So now I'm gonna go stitch this down at a quarter inch seam allowance along this entire top edge. All right, once you got it stitched in place, trim off the zipper overhang on the folded over edge. Only on the folded over edge, not over here. Don't trim that off. You want that to be long. Do not trim that off. And then grab a lighter and you're going to melt down the edge over here with the fold over edge and go ahead and melt down this shorter hangover as well. Okay, so now rotate this so you have the exterior facing you and then grab your remaining zipper and with the zipper teeth facing down, the raw edge on top and the folded over edge on the right this time, we're gonna look at the back of the front panel and the folded over edge needs to match up with the binding. So it just starts where the raw edge of the binding is and clip this in place along the top edge of the front panel. Remember the zipper and the panel are wrong sides together. And now let's sew along that clipped edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. All right, so just like before, on the folded over edge, only the folded over edge of your zipper, you can trim off the excess, the overhang, and then grab a lighter. Make sure you melt that down. And I also like to just do the hangover edge. And now just double checking, the folded over edges should be on the same side, right? So they come together like this. The folded over edges should be here. The hanging over edges should be over here. All right, so now I'm gonna grab a little woven tag and my zipper pull and my remaining binding and we're gonna finish this up. So first things first, you're gonna have to add your zipper pull. I know, some people, you, you hate doing this. You hate adding it after you've already sewn it on, but it's, you, there's really no way around it. You gotta add it this way. This is how it works. This is also a fun moment just to test it out. Look at that, isn't that cool? Oh my gosh, I love this bag, it's so good. Okay, so we wanna open it most of the way. Um, let's go to the sewing machine and just stitch right over the edge of this. Yeah, let's do that. You can also just add a clip here if you prefer, but let's stitch over these zipper coils just to make sure that our zipper doesn't fly off while we're working on this. So whatever measurement your binding is supposed to be for this top piece, make sure it is that measurement. You know, most of the time I, I make my binding longer. I don't really, I just kind of willy nilly it and trim it down. This one, we don't trim it down. It stays this length. So make sure it's the measurement the pattern tells you. And so then grab your binding and if you're if you're using any sort of foldable binding, go ahead and fold it in half so you can get that midpoint mark. Okay, so here's how we're gonna do this. You're gonna start on the overhanging edge of your zipper. And I'm just going to peel this off a little bit at a time. And I'm not even gonna peel all of it off, I'll show you. So I'm gonna start on the left side here of my zipper tape. I'm gonna lay my binding so that the zipper is over it, just like this. And the left raw edge of my zipper tape lines up with that midpoint mark just like that. I'm gonna add this after the fact. So I'm gonna rotate this around just so I can see it better. And I'm gonna go along this edge over here. This, this is the front panel, the front panel edge, adding my binding on just along this top straight edge. So with the adhesive binding, I like to go a few inches and then I'll just carefully wrap it around. And remember if it's too close to the zipper teeth or anything like that, you can readjust, you can move it around. I'm just gonna keep going along this edge, wrapping my binding around this top edge here. I'm gonna go all the way until I get to the other end of that front panel. And you are gonna wrap it around the curved over bit of your zipper tape, there we go. All right, once I have it so that I'm at the overhanging edge, if you're using double-sided tape or adhesive binding, I would cut down the paper because we don't, we're gonna leave this and we don't want this to start sticking to everything. So now we're gonna rotate our bag and I'm gonna look at the other side of my zipper tape and then keeping my binding straight, I'm gonna pull this out and I'm gonna grab the other end of my binding and I'm going to attach it starting at this edge of my zipper tape just like I did on the other side. So once again, I'm gonna rotate this and I'm just adding the binding to the top edge of the now back panel. Keeping everything as straight and lined up as possible, but always make sure you know you can you can fix it later. So you can, if it's easier to just kind of get started, even if it's a little rough, can go back later and clean it up. So I'm just gonna wrap it around the other edge 
of my bag. And then once again, I'm just going to kind of rip off the paper here so I have it over here and I don't have to worry about that sticking to anything it's not supposed to stick to. And I would highly encourage you if you're not using adhesive binding that you do use double-sided tape. It's, it's just gonna make life so much easier if you use your double-sided tape here. All right, now I have the long edges added. And then for this little bit over here, remove your paper and we can just kind of pull it and fold it in half, wrong sides together. And just do your best to line up those raw edges. There we go. So now the binding is just like a little handle here. Isn't that fun? Okay, so now I'm gonna add a woven tag to this. Mm, I think I'm gonna add, I don't know. I have two, I have one that says well read, one that says bookish. They're so cute too and little. I think I'm gonna use bookish. And I'm gonna attach this to the back panel just because I already have a tag on the front panel. And so I'm just gonna look top right corner here. I'm gonna lift up my binding. I'm just gonna slide this right in there and put the binding back over it. There we go. Make sure it's as close as you can get to the top edge. There we go. All right, now I'm gonna take this to the sewing machine and I'm gonna sew with the zipper side up. So I'm not sewing it like this. I'm sewing it like this from the inside of the zipper. I'm gonna sew from one end of my zipper tape all the way around to the other end. I'm gonna use a 3 8 inch seam allowance here and make sure you back stitch at the beginning and the end. Look at that, isn't that sweet? That little tag there. Oh my gosh, this is so pretty. Okay, last step is adding a zipper tab because we just don't want this raw edge over here. If you, if it's a little wonky or something, you can clean it up. Just trim it down and make it straight. Just remember anytime you trim zipper tape, you wanna give it a little, little burny burn. So now grab your zipper end and you're gonna fold it so that the two short edges come together, wrong sides together, just like this. And you're pretty much just gonna wrap it around your zipper tape like that. I like to use double-sided tape on both sides. I feel like it helps. I'm just gonna add a couple pieces of double-sided tape to each side of that midpoint mark. And my midpoint mark is just a fold because it makes it easy for me to see it. And then I'm gonna remove the paper from one side of it and I'm going to lay my zipper end over my zipper tab. And then I want the short edge of my zipper tape to line up with that midpoint mark. Then I'll just wrap it around. So I'm just make sure it all looks right. All right, looks good. Remove the paper from the other tape. I just find tape really does help with these types of things because they like to move around a bit, but I also use clips. And now I'm gonna do like the pattern does and I'm only going to top stitch along the raw edges. I'm not gonna top stitch along the folded edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Make sure you back stitch at the beginning and the end. Okay, the zipper tab is added. How stinking cute is this? And so you can see if you're not into like super clear vinyl, a jelly vinyl is gonna be your best friend because you can still have it exposed on the back. It's easy to keep clean, easy to wipe down. It looks great. It almost looks like a lining is in there, but you don't see through it entirely. Let me just give you a little quick compare here. Here's the small version, which is completely see-through, and here's the large version. Oh my gosh, aren't these so stinking cute? I hope you love making these. I seriously, I, I, I have, I want to make so many more of these. It's, it's a problem. What do you guys think? Isn't it so stinking cute? And isn't it quick? It's really quick. And it, the details, look at this. Look at that little tag, that little bookish tag. The details are killing me on this. I love it. So it's a fantastic starting kind of base design, you know? I, like I said, make it as easy as possible. Use the jelly vinyl, use the adhesive binding, really make that part simple, and then just go wild with it. Add some little tags, add your own little like, you know, top stitched pockets on it. You can really have a lot of fun with adding to this um, or keep it as is because honestly, it's absolutely perfect as is. It is one of the cutest bags I've ever made and I'm obsessed with jelly vinyl. Oh. I'm actually gonna be placing an order for some more jelly vinyl today, even though I have enough. I, I, I need more and I wanna make more of this bag with that new vinyl. So this is a really exciting pattern. I mean, it, it's, it's an exciting, when you, when you find a pattern that's like, I know material I wanna buy to make with that pattern. That's really cool. That's a fun one to do because like it sticks with you. So if you make this bag, please let me know. If you share it on social media, make sure you tag me. I'm Oakler, it's, I'm on all the social medias. Also make sure you tag Lenix Studio. 
We want to see your version of this because I, I'm like, I'm blown away. I, I want to make a thousand and I can't, so you must do it for me. <laughs> I hope you guys are having a great day. Have a fantastic rest of your week. Get out there and make something. Bye guys. Thank you so much for watching today's tutorial. I hope that you are inspired to go make something and have a lot of fun with these patterns. If you're not already subscribed, please make sure you click subscribe down below. Also make sure you hit that little bell, the little notification bell. That's gonna make sure you're notified every single time we have a new video or when we go live. For even more fun content from Oakwoods, make sure you're following us on Facebook and Instagram. We do daily stories over there, which include unboxing, talks about books, other little mini tutorials, lots and lots of discussion over all kinds of things going on. You can also find us on TikTok and also on Reels for even more fun, kind of more random content. And if you really wanna dive in for some behind the scenes content, free gifts, access to shop items before anybody else, and influence on upcoming videos, make sure you go check out Oak Alerts over on Patreon. We have a lot going on over there and it's a fun place to hang out and you are directly supporting the Oak Alerts YouTube channel. These videos could not be possible without the help of my Patreon. So thank you so, so much to everybody over there. Thank you again for watching today's tutorial. I hope you enjoy the videos. Go make something.